Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be showing how to get MinGW working with Visual Studio's code under Windows. So for this we're going to install two pieces of software, MinGW and Visual Studio's code, and then we're going to look at how we are going to uh, kind of configure them. So I've already downloaded the installers, one here from the uh, MinGW, the minimalist GNU for Windows. GNU is the GNU is not Unix, but it's the compiler, the GNU compiler collection. Specifically, we're going to put in G++ for doing C++ development. Um, so I've already downloaded that. Uh, the URL you'll find in the link below. And then I've also already downloaded here the Visual Studio's Code installer. Now Visual Studio's Code will run on uh, every OS we've got around. Um, and so I'm running Windows this demo. So this is I've got the user installer for the 64-bit install. And so we'll be installing each of those, and here are the installers I've got. So first I'm going to run the MinGW installer. Um, the MinGW installer is, I'm going to say, a little bit technical to figure out and understand, so it's not quite the same wizard we're all used to. Let's have a look at it. Um, so first off, you get to pick where you want to install it. You should put it in a location that does not have a space in the path, such as the default C slash MinGW. So that's a good place to go. I'm also going to add support for user interface. Sure, why not? Give me an icon on the desktop. Why not? And do all the other stuff. I think that all looks okay. So let's go okay, continue. And now it's going to download um, the pieces it needs in order to run the installer. So this is just getting the installer up and running. Okay, now that it's finished installing the installer, we'll go here and let it run that installer. Um, I'll minimize this and we'll see that it's actually, I think, now created an icon on my desktop. So if I want to change anything, I should come back and run this installer as opposed to the other one I've downloaded already. So now I need to tell it what I want to select, what parts of uh, the compiler collection I wish to install. So I'm going to put in the developer tool chain bin, I think. Um, components necessary to create relatively complete uh, installer and suitable. Okay, I think I need that. I'll just take it. And I also need, I definitely need this down here at the bottom, um, the MySys space. That's going to give me a lot of the installation, kind of, or the, the tools that are needed uh, to go along with this. Okay, so that's automatically selected this one at the bottom as well. Now I need to also bring in this base one here, uh, basic MinGW installation. I'm going to bring that one in because it's going to give me the support for uh, GDB which is a debugger, and then I can pick what language I want. I want to do C++ development, and that executable is called G++, which is the GNU C++ compiler. So I'm going to mark that one from installation as well. Um, if you wanted to do object or, uh, Objective-C, Fortran, or Ada, of course, you can pull those in as well. We don't need those. So I'm going to go here to installation in the top left, and then say apply changes that I've now marked. And it says, OK, you sure you want to do this? And I'm going to say OK. And it's going to go now and download all of the code, or all the packages that it needs, and it's going to be installing them here under my Windows machine. Uh, so I'm just going to let that run, and I will uh, speed this up. Okay, so now, after many minutes, let's see, we've got this thing up and running. It only took 10 minutes to install. So I'll close on that. And with any luck, it's now finished the installation. Let's go quit there, see if it worked. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to test to make sure it's installed correctly. Um, now to do that, I'm going to want to be running this from the command line and kind of making sure other programs can access this. So I want to set up the path first. So I'm going to go into Start Menu, and I'm going to select to go to um, Settings. And then from here, There we go, type in path. Uh, so I want to edit the environment variables of the system. And down here at the bottom, environment variables. And I want to look at the path, which is going to be here. Edit that. And it's got all of the basic ones. And I'm going to add in where I installed MinGW2. So if I go into my C drive, that's the CD ROM. There we go, C drive, MinGW, and bin. So if I click on the title, that's the path I want to add. I'm going to come in here and say I want a new, and put that in here. OK. Hit OK again. And now when I create a new terminal, type in terminal or CMD, now when I run this here, I can just type in G++, and it will find it. That's fine. So your G++ dash dash version, 
I run the G++ compiler, print out some version information. And if I run GDB, which is the other one I need, minus minus version, it'll also find it. So those are the programs I needed to install. So now that I've got this mingw installed, that's the first half of the problem. The next half is getting, um, let me go back here to my downloads, and I'm going to install Visual Studio's code. So I've already downloaded the installer for that, set the license, and where do I want to put it? Default location is going to be fine, Visual Studio code is fine, um, and I'm going to let it add it to the path. This is a nice way to do it, and I'm also going to create a shortcut to the desktop just so I can run it easily. Now this will install all of its programs. So Visual Studio's code is the editor. It's the thing we're going to interact with to write our code. MinGW is the compiler. It's the program that runs behind the scene that takes our code and converts it into an executable that can run. Now that we have the Visual Studio system installed on the computer, we're going to create the folders and actually make some code work. Now this is the second take I've done on uh, this process to update it to work with C in and C out as well. So the first thing I want to do is create the project folder uh, for all of the projects I'm going to work with. So this is sort of the all-encompassing workspace, if you will. So I'm inside of my documents on my computer on this what is my C drive. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say I want a new folder, or I can go up here at the top and say new folder. And let's name this CMPT 130, for example. Now inside the Compute 130 folder, I'm going to create a new folder here. I'm just going to call this one, say, I don't know, let's call it Lab 1, because you'll probably be doing a lab. So we're going to make this the project workspace that we're going to work inside of here. And just for fun, I'll put in here, maybe you've got like an assignment uh, AS1, assignment 1, that may also be in here, as well as a bunch of other things. So you'll have a bunch of folders here. Having created the folder, I'm going to go back into Visual Studio's code which has nothing loaded, and I'm going to open that workspace. So I'm going to say File, Open Workspace, and then I'm going to go under my Documents, and under Documents I've got Compute 130. So I'll open that, and in fact this is not going to work for me because I'm trying to open an existing workspace, of which I haven't yet created. Let me cancel that. I'm going to open the folder. So open a folder, now I'll do that again. Compute 130, that's good. Select that folder. This will allow me to create a workspace here if I want to. Okay, so now I have my uh, projects. Um, let's go in this, under lab one, let's create a new file. So I click on that, I'm going to say new file, and I'm going to call this one, well, what else would I call it, but hello world.cpp. I'll type in the code, so I want to hash include io stream, and oops. Stream, I'm going to say using namespace std. We're going to do int main, and I don't need to put anything in there. I'm going to do cout hello world. Now, as it turns out, this program will run nicely pretty much no matter how I do it. Um, it gets a little more complicated than when I start to do cn, and in fact, Windows begins to handle things quite poorly. So let's just write that here uh, int uh, age equals zero, see out your age, and I'll leave it at that, see in to age, and then see out you are age old, years old, and good enough. Fairly simple program, we'll print to the screen, and we're going to read in with a see in statement from the keyboard. It turns out if I just go to run, it's not going to work well. It's going to put it in the wrong spot. I can't type in input to the CN. So we get a different way of doing this. So I'm going to go up here to Terminal, and I'm going to say Configure Default Build Task. I can select which one I want to use to build it. I'm going to say I want my G++ to build, and this will create my tasks.json file. This will basically configure the default build, and the defaults are all just fine for me here. We can see it's going to run my mingw install. All right. Now, to compile it, for me, my hotkey is Control F9. Yours might be Control Shift F, uh, Control Shift B. Look for the hotkey here, and then memorize it. This is going to be the thing you do the most. It'll be that nervous twitch you have. So down here in the terminal, it popped up a terminal. It said, well, here it ran the command to actually build it. So min gw, it ran the g++ command here. And it told it it wanted to output into this file here called hello world.exe. 
which we can see here on the left. Now if I click on it, it doesn't really want to show me in the editor because it's not meaningful to look at. It's saying here, uh, this is not displayed in the editor because it's either binary or unsupported text encoding. Um, that's fine. I never want to look at it. I just want to run it. So don't worry about that. I'll come back over here and I will hit any key to get rid of that. Now I want that, I want a terminal. So I'm probably gonna have to go up here to uh, terminal and then new terminal. And this will allow me to terminal. This is where I'm gonna actually run my code. Now to start with, it's put me in the compute 130 folder, which is the root of my project. I wanna get, I wanna run this hello world. So the easiest way to do that is I'm gonna change directory. So CD space and then the directory name, lab one. I'm gonna do ls to show me what's in this folder. And this is the file I want to run. And so I'm gonna say dot slash hello world dot exe. And this will execute the file here. So to actually print up that, I can age is a 22, and your age is 22 years old. So that allows me to do input and output uh, nicely. So every time I wanna make a change, and I'll demonstrate that now, um, I'm gonna make a change to my code, how old your age in years. And then I'm gonna rebuild that, so I'll go up to terminal and then control F9 for me, or control shift B probably for you. After I've rebuilt it, this executable will have updated. Get rid of that. And I'm back to where I was with my current, my, ta uh, my terminal is still there. I can type in again, hello world.exe. I'm using tab complete here. We see that it switched the slash to a backslash for me under Windows. That's okay, don't need to worry about that. They both work. And now we're seeing we're owning my updated code. So I can say I'm 100 years old. And it tells me that I'm 100. Um, so the speed that I would normally do this in, I might say, years old and add a few exclamation marks, control F9 on my machine. This, I can hit up to rerun the previous command and hit enter and run it. So it's a pretty fast process uh, once you're onto it. Um, if you have another project, so for example here I've got an assignment one, let me just copy and paste this. I'm gonna copy it into assignment one. Let's rename my CPP file to like AS1 is awesome and this is my assignment I'll get rid of this stuff here so now I've got these two CPP files if I wanted to build this one I can just go control F9 or control shift B for you possibly it builds it and then in order to run it I can't run it from right here where I am because I'm in the wrong folder I can see that because of my term, my path all here. I'm in the lab one folder. So I can say cd space dot dot, which takes me to the uh, one folder up, ls to show me what's here, and I wanna say cd space as, uh, as1. ls, and here it is. So here I wanna say dot slash as1, and I could type it all out, but I'm just gonna hit tab to tab complete. Gotta make sure I get to the one where it is an executable. And now I run it, and this is my assignment. One thing I'll point out is if you try to run the CPP file, because it happens to be before the EXE, uh, Windows pops up a box, which I don't think I can actually move over there. No, it won't let me move. But it shows me, you know, what do you, how do you want to open this file? And the answer is I don't want to. Just click away from it, it'll go away. What I really want to do is run this executable. Um, okay, so that's the basic process we'll use throughout the course to compile it. I just switch to whichever file I want and I will compile with my hotkey, which I will have memorized and then I will run it by getting to the right spot in the terminal. So a couple things that can go wrong. One, if you have this tasks.json still open, that's fine, you just you can be anywhere else and compile your programs, no worries. However, if you're in tasks.json and you try to compile, so I'm gonna go terminal and say run build task, this is going to fail. We can see down here that it failed and termination with an exit code of one. It didn't look like the usual run, and I can then go back and I can, if I wanted to, have a look at everything that's going on here. Uh, it says file format not recognized. Treating as a linking script. Well, that's not what we want. It's not trying to link it. Basically, this is a, this is not compilable. You can't compile the JSON file, so don't even try. It just doesn't work. I'll get rid of that. Um, the next thing you might encounter is a permissions problem. So let me rerun my program. I'm gonna actually go here to cd dot dot slash lab one, and then I'm gonna run the program. Hello world. Now this program is currently running, which means that it is loaded and nobody can change it. If I try to recompile my prod, my file, this will fail with a permission denied error. 
we can see here I'm trying to recompile, and it's telling me permission denied. I cannot do that. It can't write to the file because the file is in active use by the compiler. So, in order to fix that, what I want to do is I want to go back to my program and I want to kill it. Now we can see here the list of terminals using this drop down. I can click on Hello World, for example, and I can get rid of this. I can Control C to end a program. Control C will should end my program. Now, if I go back to my tasks, well, I'm just going to rerun that. So for me, hotkey to rebuild. Now the build will work fine. So if you get a permission denied, check for other ones being here. You can also just click the trash can and that will close them all. And if that doesn't work, try closing your whole Visual Studio's code and relaunching it. Um, for some students, what will happen is when they go and they build their project, it will immediately show up here on the left and then disappear. Like that, except just automatically disappear. Um, that's been found to be a feature of McAfee that thinks it's a virus. I think it basically doesn't understand that, doesn't recognize the executable, and it might just then think it's a virus. So, assuming you believe your system to be virus free at the moment, you can probably assume that your compiled program that you have just wrote, written won't contain a virus. So, my suggestion then is add the compute 130 folder, the whole folder, to be an excluded folder. So, McAfee or your virus scanner ignores it. Um, some students have reported an issue that when they try to run the program, so for example from here, they try to run, well it's not actually here, so let me rebuild this, hello world, get my hotkey, build it, good, and there it is, that when they try to run the program, it tells them something to the effect of the executable not found, or even the executable doing simply nothing when you try to run it. And I got a couple fixes for that. The first, relatively easy one, is delete the VS code a folder. If you delete this whole folder, all of the configuration that you stored inside of tasks.json will be gone. That's fine. Uh, you can easily recreate that. If after you rebuild, you still are unable to run the executable, the next tip is to move your project. And I will show you that here. So this is kind of the final thing that I would do if I had a problem running my code. Um, I would close Visual Studio, actually first off let's do, uh, why not? I'll close Visual Studio's code. I will take my Compute 130 folder from here, right click and say cut. Now that I've cut that, I'm going to go back down to my C drive, wherever that is, here it is, and I'm going to paste. And so this moves it from my home directory into the C colon slash, as we can see up here in the path. This is good because it gets out of what is otherwise a relatively managed folder for Windows, and Windows may be preventing me from doing much there. So once I move it to the C drive slash, it is then kind of accessible, fully accessible. As well as I'm going to delete this VS Code folder just to kind of force it to do as much as I can in terms of kind of cleaning its state. So now when I run uh, code again, it can't find the previous workspace because I moved it. So I'm going to open the file. And I'm going to go back up here to my PC and then Compute 130. It's lost all the configuration from before, so I'll do that again. Configure the default build tasks. It's currently trying to enumerate it, I think. Oh, I need to, uh, there we go, open up a CPP file before it does that. Configure the build task. Now it knows it's a CPP file and what to do. I'll create the task.json and we're back up and running with this building, hopefully, and running. So again, to run it, I'll go to the terminal, cd, this was in AS1, and I can run my awesome CPP, my awesome executable. Okay, uh, so that is all of the currently known hiccups that people are encountering. Um, a couple things just to double check if you're having an issue, double check that you're in the right folder when you try to run your executable, double check that you can see it. When you run it, double check that you put period slash and then whatever it is you want to run. Make sure it's the .exe and not something else. Um, if you put a period space, it'll tell you you can't run this period. Period is not a uh, recognized name of a commandlet. That's because I don't want the space there. All right. Uh, thank you for watching.